Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to model loads and generate load combinations in STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this video, we're going to be focusing on using the floor load command. Now, this command is used to apply a pressure to a zone surrounded by beams that form a closed loop. We are now going to turn our attention to our sample model. And you can see our loading page is already selected in our workflow page control area. After you do that, you're going to select the load cases in your load and definition dialog. Now for this model, we're going to be applying our floor load within the live load category. So I'm going to highlight the live load. I'm going to go to the loading tab in my ribbon toolbar and then select the load items option. Once we're in the create new load items dialog, we're going to find our floor load option. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter a range. We're going to enter a Y range and we're going to enter our load magnitude, which will be negative 0.05 kips per square foot. And we're applying it in the global Y direction. Now we told the program we wanted to find a Y range. So we're going to come over here on this side and enter our range. And we're going to enter a range of 17 to 18 feet. Now, if I move this off to the side, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a floor load for this upper level. Now, this upper roof level happens to be modeled at 17.75 feet. So you basically want to enter a Y coordinate value that's less than that level and one that's above. And what it's going to do is it's going to search for closed loops of beams within that range to apply your floor pressure load to. Now, in addition to that, you can also specify your distribution. Now, the default is to do a two-way distribution, um, but you do have the option to select a one-way distribution if that better reflects how your loads are going to be transferred to your supporting members. For my model, I'm going to leave that unselected. Now, once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the Add button, and then we'll click Close. And we can see our floor load has been added in our model. Now, right now, my floor load is showing up a little bit too large. So let me show you how to make or adjust your scales of your loading diagrams. So if we go to the View tab in the ribbon toolbar and select our Label Settings icon, we're going to find a Scales tab within the Diagrams dialog. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically push this distributed force up a little bit. Once you have an acceptable scale, you can go ahead and click OK. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and see what STAD Pro does when you model a floor load. So here's our floor load over here. Now STAD Pro has converted the floor load into a uniform force or uniform member force. The hatched areas that you're going to see on your screen, basically what those do is they indicate the tributary area that is used to calculate the member load. So say for my particular model, I had 50 pounds a square foot. So what it's doing is it's basically multiplying that by the um, tributary area to come up with an equivalent member load. Now the Y range fields were used to specify location of the floor system. The load will be calculated for all members that lie between that range. Now if you would like to get more information on what you're seeing on your screen, say you want to see some load values. Well let's go back to the label settings area and here I can also tell the program to display my load values. Now this might give you some more information about how the equivalent member forces were calculated by the program. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.